in this video, I just want to kind of close up as far as what would be your next steps in web design and development. To this point overall, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we did during the course here, uh, we focused a lot on the web development side. Understand there's kind of three different areas of web design and development. Uh, really, we focused on the front end development side of things. From a design standpoint, though, uh, it really brushes up against front end development uh, as far as user interactivity, uh, color choices, font choices, how long is the user going to stay on your website, etc. So, front end developers, just to compare them, and also we call them back end developers. The front end developers, you know, this is really what the user sees. This is definitely the more glamorous between the two uh, areas here because, you know, you are the one that is making the designs that people will interact with, that whether or not they will like uh, interacting with your company, etc. However, um, yeah, you may also find yourself on the front end side, uh, which we also call full stack development nowadays, where, yeah, you might also be working with graphical elements like actually creating the graphics or having to resize graphics. So just because you have an HTML CSS foundation, that doesn't mean that is the end of learning and okay, now I can go out and do front end development. There's a lot of different other assets that go into making that front end element. Now in this day and age too, though, it's not a matter of just displaying to a user. Users really expect some form of interactivity, such as either being able to click on buttons and navigate, or also to even being able to store username and passwords, being able to record what they want to save, or, you know, being able to purchase things. And that's where, you know, we didn't focus on it here, but backend development comes into play. It's not the most glamorous, however, that really is the spine of the internet. Uh, this is where databases and being able to take that information that a user enters on the front end and turn it into something in the back end, be it a order in an order form, be it creating an account to store information, uh, you know, being able to access bank accounts, etc. All those sorts of things go into the back end side of web development. So can you do it all? You could. However, you're going to be stretched pretty thin as far as having to be able to do both elements. Uh, and honestly, in my experiences, just sharing, um, I find a lot of folks, you either find yourself on one side or the other side of the fence. Could you do both sides? Yes, but I've met folks in my career whereby, yes, they're back end, yes, they can do front end, but they don't like doing the front end and vice versa. So, with that in mind, let's focus back in then on front-end development. So at this point, you have HTML and CSS, and you've been exposed to responsive web design. What are some other things, though, that you might want to work on as far as continuing overall, as far as being able to continue making websites? In this day and age, you really can't just go out and get a job saying that I know HTML and CSS. A lot of companies are going to expect you to have experience in other areas, such as understanding what responsive web design is, but also two things like JavaScript or JSON. And even though um, it's not required, being able to work with graphics and user interface design, these are all sorts of things that companies will look at at a front end developer. So it's not just HTML and CSS anymore. It has very much evolved into this much larger, you know, kind of cluster of assets that you need to be prepared and familiar with. Now, I also included here just some different links as far as different training uh, is concerned. Uh, this is between Free Code Camp and Codecademy. Both are phenomenal websites, and these are things that you can do directly in the web browser. Uh, you know, you're watching your favorite TV show, you know, just log in and even 30 minutes a day. There are challenges out there that people do called like 100 days of code. It can even just be 30 minutes a day, 15 minutes, as long as you keep developing and keeping it fresh in your mind, you know, and keep growing. That's the important part. 
But let's say you've gone through the front end, but you'd like to get some experience looking at back end development. Maybe you're sitting here at the end of doing all of this front end design and you're like, you know, the design elements really aren't my thing. So what are some skills that I can start looking at as far as being a back end developer? The biggest one in my opinion and in my experiences is database. Databases, in my opinion, truly make the internet go round. So now what you're getting into are things such as SQL and also PHP to interact with the databases. Yes, you still have some JSON and even there's another language called XML to kind of tie both front end and back end together. And I've seen a lot of folks also starting to talk about Ruby. Also too, from a back end standpoint, uh, even though you might not be creating the front end, uh, these skills that you gain as a back end developer can also get you involved into content management systems. These include things like WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. Uh, these all have database backbones that need set up and working with servers so that designers can work on the front end. However, one of the drawbacks as far as back end development or server side development is that yes, most of the languages and elements, they need a server to work with. Now, we do have packages of software that can kind of trick the computer into thinking that it's working on a server. And I provided you with two of the big links here, XAMPP and MAMP. Both are phenomenal packages. I've worked with both. Honestly, anymore, I kind of have a preference to MAMP over XAMPP, but really they both do the same exact thing. What's nice about this is that you don't need to go out and buy server space to be able to practice working on and seeing if you like the backend development side of web. These give you the opportunity that you can practice, uh, you can test drive, and then you can make the decision on whether or not you want to take it further. And then like the front end side, I provided you some in, uh, references through all of the different, you know, code academies and stuff like that. Um, as far as courses go, if you wanted to go further and even just, you know, kind of test drive this stuff. It's also a great option too, as far as just even seeing if you like it before, you know, let's say you pay for a class to take it. Um, maybe you start developing as far as uh, SQL and you're like, yeah, you know what, never mind, database isn't my thing at all. You know, now you're not in a course whereby, you know, you're paying for it or anything like that. The last thing I wanted to talk about here as far as uh, the presentation goes that I provided you is uh, you are coming into web design and development where we are starting to see murmurs of what is called the Web 3.0. We have had two prior versions to this. Uh, you know, 1.0 was when the pretty much the internet was born. 2.0 was when we started switching as far as responsive web design, uh, usability, uh, taking into consideration things such as, uh, you know, more semantic based scripting and also upgrading to HTML5 and CSS3. But now you're starting to hear murmurs and people talking about Web3. I did provide some articles that if this is something that interests you that you'd like to kind of at least be aware of. Really Web3 is way more about not so much being and hosting in a singular location, but now what we're seeing is we are using a lot more blockchain and working between different types of servers as far as the big thing is security of information. Often too with Web 3.0, you start to hear a lot of people talking about the cryptocurrencies. Uh, those are a big part of Web 3.0. However, overall, I consider it, at least from what I have seen, it's in its infancy. We're still trying to figure out what exactly it looks like, but it is something that as you continue on, you really should keep an eye on. So I just wanted to share those thoughts with you as far as taking you through this presentation versus just, you know, here's the presentation. Uh, and hopefully it gives you some food for thought as far as where you would like to go as far as web design and development is concerned.